What's good, everybody? Welcome to Moments with the Mobiles. I am your man, Johnny Mobley Jr. Hey, guys, I'm his wife, Deidre. And we something like an ordinary couple. With extraordinary purpose. Greetings, salutations, accolades, and blessings, and all that good stuff. You ain't gonna sing it today. Greetings, salutations, accolades, and blessings. That was all right? You yeah. know you like it. I don't it. feel like you put your hundred all in it, but I don't need you to do it again because yeah. you're about to go. You yeah, about to go. I was about to go. You good? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. We got I'm some good. unfamiliar faces in the studio today. They are, they unfamiliar, but uh-huh. they, they about to be about to. They unfamiliar to the people. Yeah, they ain't unfamiliar to us. Right, because we've met them before. And so what we're going to do now is let them introduce themselves to you. Okay. Okay. Great morning. Great morning. Happy you. day. Don't be nervous. <laughs> just we just having a conversation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if we have some questions that you know make y'all uncomfortable, just answer them. And just smile, say, right? <laughs> if, we, if we ask questions that y'all not comfortable with, just say pineapple. And then <laughs> no, I'm gonna Fine. say yeah. I got one in there. I'll go cut it up. Answer <laughs> the question, please. Okay. Um, but no. So we have Doctor Tiffany. And uh, Dr. Marcus, yeah, it's, why? It's a married thing. Why? Uh, because they're one. Yeah. Mind your business. If it's, if, it's, <laughs> if, it's, if it's one in the house, that means everybody. Yeah, involved. both of y'all. Yeah, everybody absolutely. Involved. Absolutely. So you. Well, introduce yourself. Okay. Please tell the people who you are. I'm Dr. Tiffany Thomas. I am a family medicine physician by training, mm-hmm. um, but I always like to say my my first job is raising my two little girls, mm-hmm. um, and of course being being his wife. Cool. I'm uh, Marcus Thomas, her husband. Um, also by training, an electrical engineer. And in a nutshell, that's. Me. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. All right. Um, you gonna go first? Or? Electrical. Sean is a, uh, in elect. Okay. Architect. Architectural engineer. Yeah, yeah we kind of stumble over that. I wonder about something okay. loves is. Yeah. Um, and so mm-hmm. when you said engineer, that kind of raises our eyebrows. Okay, go ahead, black man. <laughs> and black woman. <laughs> um. Okay, so we are. We have the pleasure of having both of them here with us today. And so we what we wanted to start out with, with you guys, is, well, this has absolutely nothing to do with what you're going to talk about, but the people might just want to know, how long have y'all, you all been married? We have been married eight, going on nine years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. When will nine be? April 25th. April 25th. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I want to go a little bit further. Okay. All right. A little deeper. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, the meat. Okay. How they meet? Yeah, the meat. You like that? You like that? Like you want to I do like, like telling that? a story. <laughs> you got it, you got it. So we met our very first day of college at Clemson. Mm-hmm. So we were both in a program called Math Excellence Workshop. So it's okay. a program for engineering and science majors. Mm-hmm. So uh, you get to go up there the summer semester before you start college, and you take a calculus course. Okay. So there were two different courses. Marcus tested into his, so he was in the higher one. I did not originally get into that one, and I had to test into it. Did you take the test? I did take the test. Oh, okay, all right. All right. <laughs> and if she didn't, she took it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so I, I tested into his, and so okay. basically you just took one course the whole semester. Okay. Um, so you'd go to class for a couple hours, and then you'd go to study hall, and we were in the same study hall group. So we literally set directly across from each other at a table for two hours, two to three hours a day, doing calculus. Six weeks, eight weeks, six weeks, six weeks. Yeah, so that is how we met. That's how we met. Okay. I would, I would like to say that I got an A in the course. We both got A's. I got an A in the course. She got a higher A. She has a higher A. Say, so, what, did you get like a 99, 100, and he got yeah. like a 95? I think I probably got a 92. 92. Yeah, I snuck in there. Okay. She has a higher standard for uh, for academic success, but that's another story. Y'all ain't asking. Me but you tested <laughs> you tested into the class, right? Yes, ma'am. So mm-hmm. actually, you started off yeah. a little better, and then she came up. So what attracted you about her? Because were y'all you trying to talk um, to her about calculus or? 
That seems Jeez. absolutely crazy that you come a semester before and take one class, a calculus yeah. class. Yeah, and it gets you ahead, and you get more familiar with the campus as well. Okay, that's a, that's okay. a big advantage. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. You know, but I guess attracted to her. Initially, there wasn't like, no no sparks flying between y'all. I wouldn't say. Oh, all right. So we're gonna mm -hmm. tell the story. So I tell the story. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I like to try to pick up on things with people to try to bring it up later to try to be more relatable and make sure they know I'm paying attention to them. So initially, I would just make a small talk with her at the gym. He's playing basketball. Yeah, I'm just talking. And because um, <laughs> it benefits him. Okay. And she was like, um, I would just make a small talk. I was like, so hey, um, so are you a cheerleader? Even though I remember during her introduction, she said she was a cheerleader. She like flipped out. She's like, oh my goodness, do I act like one? Do I do this or that? I was like. Nah, I just remember you said she was a cheerleader. Right, <laughs> right. Talk to you about it. Okay, so I just went to play basketball and let that be it. But um, ultimately, she was she's smart, and that was that was attractive from that standpoint. I was like, oh man, she really on her stuff because she got high standards for her academics. Because I thought that you know we had quote unquote failed the test. Like me, it was me, her, and another friend of ours. It was like, man, we ain't doing well at all. It was our study group, pretty much. Okay. And we was just walking back to the dorms, and then she said, she got quiet, because me and the other girl, we was talking about how bad we did. I was like, why are you so quiet? We all talking about how we just failed this test. And then she realized that like, we actually failed, like, like D, F, like, we did four. Oh. She got, like, the 88. Or 89. I got 89. And I was upset because 90 was an A. That's what I was going to say because at that point, like, I, that was a B, right? Yeah. yeah. Almost an A. Yeah. Almost an A. Uh -huh. She was talking about how poor she did on the uh -huh. test. When she, when she realized we actually failed, that was poor for her. She was like, Marcus. oh, y'all got different standards. So, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was no. like, oh, she's failing to me was 89. Oh, and I was like, literally movie. failed. And I was like, oh, okay. I would so, like to say, that came, full circle, that came full circle, though. It did come full circle. circle. It, it came did. full circle. Because later, did. when I when I took physics, Marcus was like, oh, how'd you do? I was like, I failed. And he was like, by whose standards? I'm like, everybody. <laughs> so, oh, no. Everybody's standards. <laughs> I failed. Yeah. So that's what I was initially attracted to. And then, you know, she was fun. Like to have a good time. And she was athletic as well. So I thought that was cool. So I was like, she was good enough, like, It's cute, good looking. Yeah, all, all those things. So during the class, after the class was over, at the, the next after semester the first started, after the first half of the class, when did you like no no like like no no like no will you be here right yeah, now like no no so like, this was kind of yeah, weird like her like but you know I ain't gonna come up as a creep but um it was like three <laughs> months in, no 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 three weeks into us dating I remember we was walking underneath some trees. And that sound weird, but we yeah, was walking a from a class. We, we, was walking together. Together. we was together. We was together. We was together. I want to sound like a <laughs> nah, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but you know, yeah. you know, under some uh -huh. trees in the wood. But now, so and then I was like, remind me that I have something to say. I can't tell it to you. She thought that was weird. She just looked at me. Like, what? Remind me. I got something to say. I'm gonna tell you, but I can't tell you yet. That okay. was three weeks into us dating. Okay. And so. I kind of always kept that up throughout the relationship to tell her that. I remember I had something to tell you. She was like, yeah. I was like, all right, cool. And then we just let it go. So I leave. But that's how I kind of came to pick it up. But three weeks into it, I was like, hey, I got something to say. And then, yeah, that's what I told her. I don't know what she knew, but that's what I told her. As far as marriage goes, dating wise, that's what I told her. Okay. So that was the first year, right? Yeah. That was the, literally the first semester uh, at Clemson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, so when did y'all actually get married? We got married third year Seven. of medical school. Seven so, years later. Yeah. Really? Mm. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was. I don't know how it was much. a long relationship, a long <laughs> dating relationship. I guess we're still dating, but a long courting relationship, yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah. yeah. Any breakups in between? Mm hmm. One. <laughs> from from my standard, from my standard, Dude, Marcus, it was doesn't, one. Marcus doesn't count one because it lasted 
Less than twenty four hours. Well, he said, "I don't, I don't want to be in a relationship anymore." So I feel like that counts. Oh, it counts. That's yeah. why I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it would benefited you not to talk about it. Did he use the line? It's not you, it's me. Really? No, I don't. I don't think he. That's used what that you're line doing. Up. No, 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 no. Okay, Babe, I'm just All asking right. the question. We, we, we can do it real quick. We ain't gotta go into the details. No, of that, of that first time. But the first time I was, I was presenting options, but I had been thinking about it for a long time. So then, when I presented it to her. I was thinking she would come quick with the, okay, so this is what we're going to do. Because I was like, this ain't going to work this way. So we need to, I would like to do it a different way. Or we're going to have to just figure something else out. So I'm like, we're still a friend because we went to the football game the next day. So she ain't have an answer. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to go back. How you doing? I'll talk to you later. So later that day, I was like, when we came back from the football game, the next morning, I was like, so we good, because we talked. Yeah. She had time to think about it instead of me dropping everything on her, expect to have a reaction. And so she was like, What you mean we good? I was like, We like we together. She was like, nah. <laughs> like you broke up with me last night. I was like, nah, I did not break up with you. She was like, You gotta ask me again. Ask me out. Mm-hmm. She said, you gotta ask me out again. You gotta ask me my boyfriend out again. So I did, obviously. But that that was what she said. Was the first breakup? We have so that has been something in our relationship that we have like had to work through because he will think about something for like weeks and then he'll come present it to me and I'll be like, "You've been thinking about this for weeks and I have to give you an answer." Right, like this wasn't even on my radar. Like I didn't, I didn't even know this was an issue. Right. So it's definitely something that we've had to work through and figure it out. Um, and he he knows that like. He'll, he'll like present something and then like be like, okay, we'll we'll come back. I'm like, okay, thank you. Give me give me a little bit of time or at least a heads up. I'm doing better. Okay. Yeah, cool. That's 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 all that matters. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. It's better. All right. So Tiffany, out of all the things you could have been, wild doctor. Ooh, that's a really good question um so one of the things that i like to do is i like to teach which is a big part of my current role um so my mom's a teacher my grandma's a teacher like all the people in my family are teachers but i didn't want to teach in the standard sense Mm -hmm. um like i didn't want to like be like oh this is how you do math math is not my strong suit anyway um (laughs) and so i view being a doctor as like teaching people how to better take care of their bodies and Mm -hmm. like we like we team up together and we're like all right i'm gonna teach you how to do this um, and so when I realized that, hey, like I could, I could reach so many people doing it this way. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's why I really got into teaching in family medicine because I'm like I now I I teach other family medicine doctors or family medicine doctors in training how to then take care of their patients. So I like teach oh, people wow. how to teach people how to take care of their patients, and so it's something that I'm really able to multiply how I teach people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's that's really why I became a family medicine doctor um, because family medicine, whenever, because you do all these rotations during med school and family medicine is the only rotation where you didn't send anybody away. Because if you, if you do OBGYN, like there's, Oh, I don't see men. Or if you do internal medicine, like you don't see kids, but family medicine, like there's no one you turn away. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's like, Hey, I might not be like, I might not take out your gallbladder, Mm -hmm. but like, I can see you, we'll figure it out. I can teach you what you need to do in the meantime and I can get you to the surgeon. So that's really why I went into medicine and then why I did family medicine as well. Okay, cool. cool. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Hubby put something down here, but of course, I believe we know what it means. So, what are the letters behind your name? Dr. Tiffany. Medical doctor. Yeah. MD. Mm-hmm. MD. And then F A A F P. So I am a fellow of the American Academy of Family Physicians. Uh-huh. And so, <laughs> so there are, um, so they have them for pretty much every specialty. So if you, okay. some, some dermatologists, you'll see F-A-A-D. Um, uh-huh. And so you'll, you'll see, see, you'll see those letters. And so basically it's people that have finished residency, done all that, but they've done like the extra steps. And so, um, Teaching gets you, you have to get a certain number of points for the, um, for the FAAFP. And so teaching gets you a lot of those points. And so if you have like a certain number of medical students, or if you do volunteer work or mission trips, different things like that, Mm -hmm. that will get you those extra points so that you can apply to become a fellow. So I applied last year to become a fellow. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I got my, my pin and we had our ceremony in June. Yeah. So I, so did you do missions or 
uh, volunteerism? Both. Um, really? So okay. we uh, <laughs> so we went to uh, Africa for a medical mission trip while we were pregnant with Ruby J. Oh, um, oh, it is a that's wonderful. Ooh, it is a very um, monumental story for us because uh, initially that's your when, first daughter, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, because initially we were trying to get pregnant, whatever, and I was just like, oh, "Look, yes. look, God, I know what you're doing. Like, you want me to go on this mission trip? Find this, find a child in Africa to adopt. I'm like, this is not how it's gonna go. Like, let me tell you, this is not how it's gonna go. Um, but anyway, I was like, hey, like once I realized Marcus could go on the trip with me, I'm uh-huh. like, no, no issues, we're going. And then I jokingly told the person who was leading the trip, I was like, only reason I wouldn't go is if I was pregnant. <laughs> then like. Three, four weeks later, I was like, so, uh, by the way. So this was like right before the trip? Uh, no. So I think we went 15 weeks. We left yeah. when we were 15 weeks. Okay. Um, flying there. Yeah. And then we came, we came back at like 17 weeks. And then we, uh, we didn't tell his mom until we got back because we knew she probably would have had something to say about us going. So oh, we, we got back and was like, hey, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're <laughs> pregnant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she was like, hold on, hold on. Right, 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 right. Y'all so went down. Like, when did y'all know? <laughs> like, yeah, we knew before we went. That's why we yeah. didn't tell you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so we went to Kenya, um, and we met Mama Helen, and so she runs orphanages mm-hmm. in Kenya. Um, so part of one of our missions is like we we want to like send some of those those kids to Africa. Uh, I mean, send those kids to college. Mm-hmm. And so she, we were driving, and like she was she was telling us why there's so many orphans in in Kenya specifically is because it is illegal to adopt out of Kenya. And I remember like being in the back of the car sobbing because I was like, I'm so sorry, God. Like that was not your, like, that wasn't your plan at all. So sorry about that. Oh, um, wow. But yeah, I, I, I remember, like I remember her still like being like, oh yeah, it's illegal to adopt from Kenya because um, like they were having issues like several years before. So they just made it illegal. Like you can mm-hmm. adopt within Kenya. So like okay. if you live in Kenya, you okay. can adopt. Um, but yeah, that was... That was, a, that was a huge moment, but that mission trip, um, I'd also been to Haiti during med school, and I went to Panama and Costa Rica as well for on mission trips. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, well-traveled. <laughs> yeah, she's bougie. <laughs> she is. The good bougie. Um, so let's talk about moms. Mom. It's, so it's mothers. Let me see. I do have my own. <laughs> I put it as mom, so just because of I, mm-hmm. the the acronym that you put it for, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So tell tell us tell us about tell give us the name mm-hmm. and because I I thought that was go go ahead and do that and then I'll say what I need to say. So it's moms with margin. Or sorry, Moms of Margin. Uh, we went back and forth. Um, I wanted Moms with Margin, uh-huh. um, but then Marcus was like, Well, if you do Moms of Margin, it spells out mom. And I was like, <laughs> that's where I was going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was mm-hmm. like, kudos, mom. You're, you're right. Really you're right. So yeah, I have uh-huh. to give credit to, to Marcus uh-huh. for that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so we read the backstory, of course, of how you started it. Um, and, you know, you saw there was a need to um, help. That's mm-hmm. how it started for you. Mm-hmm. And then kind of take us from there. Because yeah. we read it, of course, but mm-hmm. I want you to share with the people um what made you, and I know at that point you were a mother, mm-hmm. not yet, not yet, but those mm-hmm. were your mother and instincts kind of mm-hmm. kicking on in before you yeah. even were a mother. Yeah. So let's tell the people, you said the name, but tell how it was, um, give us a little bit about how it was birthed and yeah. what it turned into. Um, doing. So, uh, and I just, I literally found out a couple of days, Rebecca is pregnant again. So um, Rebecca was the first mom I ever milk prep for. <laughs> Congratulations, Rebecca. <laughs> And so, um, so I remember like we were, cause it took us, it felt like it took us forever to get pregnant. It did not actually take uh-huh. us forever, but it felt like it was taking forever. And I was like, look, God, you gave me this desire to be a mom. Like, mm-hmm. what am I supposed to do with it? Like, what, what am I supposed to do with it? And he told me, he's like, just take care of other moms. I'm like, but like, how? <laughs> like people aren't going to just give me their babies to like help take care of. And they're like, uh-huh. just feed them. And I was like, you mean literally you're like support wise like what do you yeah. what do you mean and so it ended up just being literal um and so i actually started meal prepping for marcus because 
we got married during my third year of medical school, but I still have one more year. Mm -hmm. He was in Augusta. I was in Charleston. So we did long distance marriage okay. the first year. Okay. And he would, um, I called him one day and I was like, hey, uh, what you eat for dinner? And he was like, I'm eating some. We don't eat jelly. So he was eating peanut butter and preserves on some Ritz crackers. And I was like, not again. And so I started meal prepping for him. So like, alternative it's a market. classic snack. Classic <laughs> snack. I grew up on that. So I would meal prep for him. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so like whenever I'd go, I'd go back to Charleston, he'd like have food that he could put in his crock pot. And okay. So that's where I okay. started to learn how to meal prep. Okay, cool. And so then it came, it came back around and I was like, oh, I can meal prep for like moms when they get ready to go on maternity leave. So like they don't have to worry about cooking dinner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so Rebecca was the first mom I meal prep for. Mm -hmm. And she was like, that was probably, that was her favorite gift that she got at her baby shower. Wow. Or one of her favorite gifts yeah. that she got at her baby shower. Mm -hmm. And so then, like, that was just a gift I would give at baby showers. Um, and so a lot of times, me and Hannah, we would get together, and um, we would just make all these meals, deliver them to their house, um, and so they would just have have stuff to eat. Mm -hmm. um, and so it initially started as, like, feeding them physically, but now it's morphed into more physically feeding them um, emotionally and making sure that all those other needs are met. So what really is at my core is I want to help working moms find more balance between work and life. And I feel like a lot of times people are like, oh, you should take you should take more time for yourself, which is something moms should do. But no one gives them tools mm -hmm. and ways to do that. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, hey, it's almost as if you're just adding something else onto the plate. Mm -hmm. And so I want to work with moms to help unload stuff off the plate so then they can continue to do the things that make them them. Um, there are two distinct moments in my life or time periods in my life where I was just like burned out. And I knew that like something was off. And both of those times were when I weren't, I wasn't doing the things that I know make me me. Mm -hmm. And so I want to help moms realize what those things are and how they can incorporate that into the rhythm of their life and things that they do on a regular basis. So the moment they're like, Hey, something's off. They can immediately like realize it and just make that shift. That's cool. That's yeah. like another, like another branch of teaching mm -hmm. because you said, mm -hmm. of course, that's your love. It mm -hmm. seems like that's your love language. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do you as a, you know, you have a full-time career, you have mm -hmm. a husband, you have two babies. Mm -hmm. um, how do you balance your stuff, your ministry? Mm -hmm. um, how do you do balance your ministry, which I mean your house, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and you're also helping these other mommies. Mm -hmm. How does that work for you, though? Because that's going to require support from Marcus. So... I want to hear from him as well, but tell me how do you how do you maneuver all that? What so, you got on your plate? So I created the margin in my life first. Mm -hmm. um, so I distinctly remember it when we had eaten out for like the third time, and it was only Wednesday, and I was oh. like, mm, "We have to make okay. a shift." I was pregnant with Gracie, and I was like, "Cooking was just not like I couldn't put in the thought to yeah. make to make the grocery list to go to the grocery store." Mm -hmm. And so that's when I made I started making like weekly meal plans. So we had six. And so Marcus would flip through our, our binder. He'd be like, what week are we on? I tell him what week. He'd grab the grocery list. He'd go to the grocery store. He'd buy all the groceries. And like it, it took no thought or no input from me. He was able to do this. And so I really focus on making sure that I know who my support system is, mm -hmm. who's on my team, and what I can help them do or what they can help me do. So um, right now my mom really helps out. Um, she watches our kids. But she's okay. like, what else can I do? So my okay. mom washes dishes mostly. And she does a, a lot of our laundry. Okay. Um, and so that frees up me to be able to do some of those other things that I want to do that I wouldn't be able to if I just kept everything Had on my plate. all those things on your plate. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Oh, you... Okay, so, go ahead. Cause, um, you, sure, I'll go ahead. Leave, go ahead. Just, <laughs> don't be nasty. Anyway, anyway um, so Marcus, when Tiffany came to you with this brand new adventure, how did that sit with you? How did you respond to it? I thought it was perfect because, <clears throat> well, like I know how meal planning helped us a lot. I was like, okay, where are we going to eat? Because a lot of I have an issue that I'm working that I'm getting better at of wasting food and groceries. So like I would buy stuff and that was just miscommunication on my part. I would buy like, oh, I'm going to eat this this week. I just go to the store and get the other stuff. And then she'd be like, no, I already have a plan laid out. Well, I'm going to eat. You know, like when I'm eat this stuff, like maybe I'll get it on the weekend. Two, three weeks go by, food spoiled. Yeah. We throwing out 
hundreds of dollars, like literally in the trash can. But when she first came to me about, because I know her heart is to help people. Mm-hmm. And so when she was like, yo, we're going to meal prep for Rebecca. I was like, yo, that's dope. Like, yeah, let's do it. Because, you know, it was a friend. We yeah. help out a friend. Yeah. And so we doing it. We did that. It's like, all right, cool. And then another friend got pregnant, which is also part of the story. And it was like, oh, you want to do it again? She was like, of course. I was like, all right. So we made it a thing. And then her and um uh, one of my good friends, Hannah, it was like, yo, we can make this a business. Mm-hmm. And, like, I was like, and a lot of people say that. Like, I've said that before. Like, yeah. yo, this would be a good business. I'm like, y'all joking. But, like, low-key, this would be mad dope. Yeah. Like, y'all need to do this. And they were like, okay. I got a little pushy with it. They was like, no, this and then they came up with a name and everything. It was like, <laughs> yo, like, y'all really need to do this. Because, like, a lot of mothers, everybody appreciated it so much. When Rebecca uh-huh. came through and she said how much she appreciated it. And then when the second time you did it, I don't remember who that was. Kayla. That was Kayla. And she was like, uh, and Danny was hype about it too. Like the husbands and wives, everybody yeah. was happy. I'm yeah. like, y'all slow dragging this. This is like perfect. And so then when she had the small group at church, she was doing meal planning where she would, the moms would come over to the house. They would bring their ingredients, right? And then they would either go through uh, some type of Bible study or something like that while uh-huh. they were doing it. And she also did it through the pandemic. They just did it virtually. Yeah. And I was like, yo, this is really, like, they're really happy doing this. And, like, yeah, it leaves a whole lot of margin to be with their families. That's a cute plug. Do things by themselves. <laughs> and I was like, yo, this is cool. Now, the business part of it was also a little bit confusing because we had $5 in the Right. Board. But it's like, yo, yeah, and you could do cookbooks and all that stuff. We just start throwing stuff out there. And... Really, the thing was just taking that leap of faith and like, yo, this is what needs to be done. We just gotta figure out how we're gonna do it. Yeah. And I was like, you got my full support because like we've all tried to do stuff before, and I'm like, about everything we've tried to do, I'm like this sounds like it could help people the most, you know, quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm all on board with it. Whatever she needs me to do, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I'm really happy about it. One of the things we always say is, we've had that conversation with God as well. When he say do something and then he don't give no details, and then you just kind of like, but what what am I supposed to do? So you just ain't gonna say nothing. You just ain't gonna. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like once he plants that seed, well, I ain't gonna even say plant the seed. The seed was already in y'all to do this. Mm-hmm. So once it happened, everything started unfolding on how you needed to do it. And we've always said when you are answer for the world, mm-hmm. your business will prosper forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's just that's just what it is. It's not a quick fix. It's not a nothing. Especially when you help people on a day to day basis, mm-hmm. the light and they load that gives them yeah. a, a opportunity to find out their identity, to find out because most people don't. They just don't. And then you have couples with kids that the kids leave and it's twenty five years later and you looking like strangers, like Joker. I don't even know who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you've never really? put in. My wife is big on nurturing our relationship. She's always been big on that. So I believe that this will be a multi-million dollar business because it. it's needed. Yeah, it's, it really it's is. It's needed. For people to be healthy in relationships, it's needed. Yeah, so I feel like one of the... So one of the 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 foundation of the business is really meal prepping because I feel like we have to find margin in several areas. And I feel like if you can find it in your budget first, because how important and how stressful money is, yeah. like if we can, if we can make that, that, that margin. So it's like, Hey, we aren't eating out. We aren't wasting all this food. Like now we have like an extra $200 in the budget. It's like, okay, how could we best utilize this for everyone's benefit? Absolutely. Maybe it's like every other month, like we actually get to go on a date night because like we can afford the babysitter and we can afford the food. Right. Or it's also like, hey, we can get someone to clean the house. So like now that's not something that's adding mm-hmm. stress. Mm-hmm. And you can go do this. Like you can go take a walk or you can go do something else. Um, so the the first Thursday of the month, like that's one of my favorite <laughs> days because I get to go to work and person comes clean our house like i get to come home to a completely clean house um (laughs) yeah and so like part of that is because like we've been able to to budget and manage our money in a way and we've we've used different tools that we've had to like not waste money eating out not Mm -hmm. waste money 
on food um that's going bad and so that's something that that we really see and so that's that's why we we focus on like hey we're gonna we're gonna attack one of the most one of the sources one of the greatest amounts of stress in a marriage mm-hmm. money like we're, we're gonna help and i'm not i'm not the greatest at finances i won't I won't claim. I'll help mm-hmm. you save some, mm-hmm. but like you gonna actually budget. That's that's gonna be market. Uh huh. And that's good to know. You know what I'm saying? Because it helps to balance y'all out. Let me yeah. go back to what you were saying about um, just food prepping and that part of it. So what that looked like? Because um, you know, and I'm sure some other um, parents can adopt that have. Of course, our children are um, upper. You know, in age, our baby is 29. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. I, so our oldest is 34. Mm-hmm. So, of course, we've had babies that many years ago, right? And so what, what the margin, I would say the margins, um, the mom of margins would be for us was um, his mom and my mom and my grandmother and our support. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because after we had, after I had babies, you know, we got that support from our, from our parents. And um, some siblings, and and that would be um, them cooking meals. You know, my grandmother, my mom, his mom, you know, cooking meals and bringing them to the house for us to make sure that we had something to eat. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. making sure that while I was healing and taking care of baby and he was working and we had, you know, we have a total of six. And so there were other babies in the house as the babies progressively came, right? Which was like year after year, you know? Um, and, but, but anyway, you know, that for us, that took a great load off, you know what I'm saying? So I understand the importance of y'all doing it, doing it now more so in a structured way. But I just thought about that comparison that Mm -hmm. the the mom, the mom's margin was my mama, grandmama, his mama, anybody mama, you know, anybody (laughs) can say we'll drop a meal off. And so we've been blessed, you know, that when our children have had children, you know, we made the offer that I would come over and stay like the first week um, or so to help with if there were other children already, um, make a meal, order out a meal. Mm-hmm. I like to order out a meal, though. Um, I'm the mama that want to order the meal and pick it up. Yeah, we might need um, your finances. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, that just that really people, some people don't understand the importance. It may be a lot of, you know, just talking to you, uh, maybe new, newly married people who don't have kids yet or mamas that don't have children yet. Baby, this is going to help you. It's going to bless you. It's going to bless you. I'm telling you. Because that alleviates all the other stressors of taking care of the baby and, you know, what is my husband going to eat tonight or what are the other kids going to eat tonight? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, kudos yeah. to y'all. Like, for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And one, one of the things that we've implemented in our premarital counseling is when we when we do premarital counseling, especially with newlyweds, we always tell them, um, yeah, so you about to spend twenty five thousand dollars, thirty five thousand dollars on this wedding. And although the wedding is a very important time, how about let's reduce it to this? And then the money that you have for that, go ahead and pay your bills six months in advance. Cause at the end of the day, you spend twenty five thousand dollars on this wedding. That ain't including the dress and everything. So about thirty thousand, and then you do a honeymoon, which most people who spend that type of money on a wedding, they go somewhere for the weekend for a honeymoon. Mm-hmm. But if you do have the money to do that, you're spending almost fifty thousand dollars. But you coming back to electric bill, car notes, all this stuff, mm-hmm. and that's where the stress of daily life actually kicks in. Yeah. So you know, one of the things we try to Hell, it ain't a whole lot of them grab a hold of it because they were like, this is my day. It's the most important day in my life, and I'm finna do this. Yeah, I got that. But you're going to have so many more important days in your life. Yeah, We've gotten yeah. some, though, to really think yeah, about Yeah, some of them have saying? really thought about yeah. it. Yeah. And, and our thing is the wedding day, we call that the birthing room. So you don't want everybody in that because there's some people who don't support you like that, and you mm-hmm. know that. So the reception, that's different. But the wedding, the actual marriage needs to be, it's, it's, it needs to be the birthing room of something that's going to happen with the support. So with what you guys are doing, it almost like corresponds with what we're doing. Mm. So I'm thinking, go ahead. I'm thinking. He brewing something. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. thinking. And while he's brewing, let me just give y'all something 
For all things Mobleys, go to www.momentswiththemobleys.com, okay? We're on all social media platforms um, as Moments with the Mobleys. Twitter, that is now X. We are Mobley Moments. Um, yeah, sure. And so in a minute, we're going to get... Um, we're going to get um, uh, Marcus and Tiffany to tell us um, the information about um, their handles, social media handles, how to get more information have on a website, right? and all that stuff. We're okay. going to get them to do to give us that stuff before they leave. Okay. Yeah, we'll put yeah. that on our, we'll put that on our website. Um, we'll put y'all hyperlink on our website. So that can be another resource for mm -hmm. people who come in because yeah. you got marital issues and, I mean, most of the marital issues is the people not knowing who they are, yeah. but a lot of it stems from the children, the finances. Just stuff. Bills we get, and we babies used to have and, sex every day, and, and now we have it every three months because we can't. It's just a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. So if we can unpack some of this stuff, like you said, off their plate, then I think that'll be a very useful tool to have. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to do. We care about marriages, and this is a tool that can actually like low key save marriages. Help a whole lot. Yeah, because if you ain't got some of the stressors, these stressors, daily stressors on, on you. your plate, mm -hmm. then it'll give you time to take a woosaw moment and think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so <laughs> I try to be very strategic with things. And so um one to their like habit stacking principles, like within one of my meal prep course courses. Um and so like what what you do first is before you even start meal prepping or any of it like you clean out your fridge um and mm. then you clean your kitchen mm. and so most mm. of the meals hallelujah i felt jesus on that it does most of, cleans out the refrigerator most of the meals are mm -hmm. either crock pot meals mm -hmm. cheap pan meals or a skillet meal okay so like if you clean your kitchen like you aren't in it like you literally get the plastic bag you dump all the ingredients on the sheet pan you put it in the oven like you you have a sheet pan and the dishes you ate off of like you didn't you didn't get a cutting board out you mm -hmm. don't have to clean knob like you don't have to clean any of that stuff and so that's one of the ways that that I try and set it up because I'm like having a I I typically talk about all of the the different spectrums of of wellness and so like environmental wellness is is one of the aspects of wellness and so it's not just like like whenever people say environmental they're like oh are you recycling but like uh -huh. marcus knows that part of my environment like our bedroom um is the biggest part of the environment that i care about so like mm -hmm. if he can keep the bedroom clean um and i like have a, a retreat that i can go to where it's like i'm not seeing all the stuff then he's like okay like i can keep her at a less stressful level mm -hmm. if i can take care of this like instead of cleaning our whole house which is not as grandiose as y'all's. Mm -hmm. Y'all's is gorgeous. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but so he knows that he's uh -huh. like, hey, this is something I can focus on. And then uh -huh. also taking doing the extra step to take care of my environmental wellness is like I like scent. So like I light a candle when I when I meal prep. And so taking the time mm -hmm. taking I'm time a too. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Just taking that time to yeah. understand, like, understand that about yourself. Like when, mm -hmm. when everything isn't so stressful, then it's like, hey. I can keep myself out of the hole. Like, like we yeah. can, we can kind of like I finally start to get ahead just by just like, just like, you just have to like have that, that first small step that allows you to like a little bit of space. And you're like, okay, like how can I recreate this? Like, mm -hmm. like I found my like 10 minutes in my day. Okay. Like how can I, how can I use this 10 minutes to find 20 minutes tomorrow? Um, or, or like this really helps. And so kind of habit stacking and like adding those things on. So it's like, Hey, a lot of the stress is relieved. Like we're mm -hmm. able to get with a lot of the stress just by like creating a plan and creating a system. Yeah. And so systems are like where I'm at. I love systems. That's the thing that you he does too. talk about. Batch. Is it batch? What is it called? Batch learn? Batch? You know what it is. You <laughs> got me struggling. <laughs> 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 oh, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What you saying? Yeah. What was that? So one thing yeah. that I talk about sometimes is decision fatigue. And so yeah. I try and batch as many decisions as I can all at once. Uh -huh. And so it's like, instead of everyone, every day I have to pick out everyone's clothes. It's like, no, one day of the week, I pick out everyone's clothes for the week. And uh -huh. so I'll pick out all of my clothes. I pick out all of Ruby's clothes, all of Gracie's clothes. Mm -hmm. um, I pick out his clothes as much as he'll let me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it, during the week, it's like, Hey, I don't, I don't have to worry it's about, a no I don't, brainer. yeah, I don't yeah. necessarily have to worry about laundry. Cause I know we at least have clothes to wear. Uh -huh. Like eventually yeah. we'll have, we'll have to get the laundry, but like, yeah. I, I know that we have clothes to wear. So that's mm -hmm. one, one less stressor. Um, the other thing I do is whenever we go out of town, 
um, if we're if we're applying. Uh-huh. I try and I make the girls match, which I mean they're at the age it doesn't really matter. But uh-huh. a it's easier to spot yeah. them, and then it's yeah. uh, less decisions that I have to make while yeah. while we're out. Like I'm like, uh-huh. oh, what are they each gonna wear? It's like no, yeah. they're wearing the same thing. Just put them on like yeah, all mine so, used to match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. easy. Yeah. And that's I what even, that is. Yeah. I didn't even know that until she told me that yesterday. I was like, I was like, why are you making them match every time we go somewhere? And I was like, oh, that makes a lot. It's easier. Yeah. It's just yeah. It's easier. And you yeah. can just identify them, so it's like okay, they're right there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So mom started in two thousand. What unofficially in two thousand? What? Ooh. Ruby, was, Ruby was born in nineteen. Yeah. Oh, was it eighteen? Yeah. Unofficially. Yeah, two thousand eighteen. Yes, ma'am. So, a- okay. so I kind of so Avery is the first baby that I meal prep for. Okay. And she just went to kindergarten. Really? Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, is what two thousand seventeen? Are you breaking the wall? Uh huh. Yeah, you broke the wall. That's my two thousand. So it wasn't seventeen. It's true. Oh, you was. Yes. Yeah. Wait, was it for Harper? I was about to say, was it? (laughs) I forgot Harper was over than Avery, but yeah. So did you? So how many? Like, what's the range of of parents that y'all have helped since? Starting mom, can you think back? Like a number? Or yeah, a number. A families you've been able to pour into. I probably said twenty or more. Um, because if we count the small group, that's cool. And then small all the moms. Um, and so like part of. Yeah, for how? She's on the. She's on the. She was in the small group. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, just, you made me, I forgot what I was saying. I knew it. Okay. I knew it. I knew it. I want to answer this question. Okay. Now, I know you support your wife in this entire vision, and you got her back. What What has been the response of, like, the other husbands, fiance, boyfriends? He did say a little bit to, of it, and yeah. they were excited. To what she, what her vision is, and the whole company, yeah, they in love with it. Like they, because a the food was good that she decided to make recipes for, but they're like, "Yo, we already smashed two of the <laughs> French toast joints, and this is going too." It's like, yeah. man, we ate it kind of fast. Like, when we, can we do this again? It's like, oh man, it's like y'all. When they said that, that was just extra on top. Of it. Yeah. Like, Yo, you might have something here. It's like, I don't know nothing about the food industry or yeah. like how you would do it remotely, but yeah, yeah, that that was that was the moment. Every every dude I know is like, yo, this is dope. Yeah, like, I ain't got to wear because some of the guys they do the you know cooking like it yeah like split yeah so they're like yeah I didn't have to do anything for the food so it's like it's already so in. So you have do you have single moms in that too? Or everybody is married. So everyone isn't married. Um, so whenever we meal prepped at our house for my small group, um, some of those were single moms. Yeah, so oh, I know wow. that probably blessed them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, I did. How do you come up with the recipes? So like, I, I know you said skillet base or mm-hmm. you know like crock pot meals and stuff like that. Is that the main focus to do meals that can? Yes. Like easy. Yes, we want them to be quick and easy. So if you, okay. if, you if you want like a five course meal like that, that's on your own time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I get you. So um, what would a typical breakfast, lunch, and dinner look like? So a lot of the day? times, uh, so. So I have, I call it the baby on the way special. Okay. Um, and so I typically, I ask people what are their allergens. Like I did this, okay. um, I want to say I did it like two nights ago. Cause someone was like, can you send me the recipes? And I was like, of course, what are their allergens? Like, are they allergic to anything? Uh-huh. Do they absolutely hate anything? Um, one of our friends, and it's just really interesting to know. One of our friends really hates beans. Um, uh-huh. so Danny doesn't like beans. Yeah. And like some of my, like <laughs> I had to switch up so much for them. Right. Um, and so it's uh, so I make these breakfast burritos. Uh-huh. So typically it's something you just throw in the microwave for a couple minutes. Okay. Um, and so we also make some French toast casserole, um, which is oh, it's really yeah. Good. Let me so, get that before you leave. Yeah. Right. So those sure. are some of the. We don't breakfast. do a lot of that, but you know, mm-hmm. you know, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of the, mm-hmm. that's that's what some of the breakfasts would be. Uh-huh. Um, and then a lot of times you would just defrost whatever you wanted for dinner and okay. then throw it in the crock pot. So oh. I do a white chicken chili. Um, we will also do like a we'll do some soups that we just pre-portion into like a little bowl so you can just defrost and freeze those during the day if you want something really quickly for lunch. Uh-huh. Um, and so we would do a beef and barley stew that Marcus <laughs> really liked. Um, so different, heavy, but it was good. different things like that. <laughs> like um, we did a jambalaya and uh, 
Jamie um, didn't trust the amount of rice you're supposed to put in it. And so he put in like twice the amount of rice. And he was like, yeah, it was too much. Yeah. It was too much rice. But That's yeah, but like most it. of them, <laughs> like you can just, you just dump them in the crock pot yeah. or, or whatever. So it doesn't really take you any time at all. That's yeah. good so, stuff though. So I'm thinking, I ain't, I ain't, we ain't going to do all this on, on camera, but yeah. I'm thinking when Amari eats. Have y'all seen that on our website, on our social media? I know, I've heard you talk about so, it. The seasoning. Yeah, oh, they man. got seasonings, the non, non-salt and salted. And the salted. Mm-hmm. So we might have to turn y'all on to that. Mm-hmm. And then y'all can actually use some of those seasonings to kind of switch it up. She got a lot of great seasonings. But a lot of it, most of the, everything that we get from her is the non-salted. But yeah, I can't tell. Yeah, we get tell. non-salted. Yeah. Does she have um, like little packets of samples? Um, I don't know. I can find out. I know yeah. she has smaller the bottles, smaller bottles, smaller and, bottles and then she just so started doing thing. the larger bottles. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she has like our favorites are like a uh, seasoning that's called All Dad, mm-hmm. um, High Stakes, and Sweet Heat are our three favorites. Yeah. She has like a fishy fish one, yeah, um, Cajun one, a Cajun one. It's yeah. unlimited. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna see what I have in there because I I may have some smaller some of some smaller ones. Um, that y'all can kind of take and kind of sample mm-hmm. um, to see if y'all like them. But she's another. She's a black owned. They're a black owned family. Um, a black owned family business. <laughs> Duh, business. Um, and she had. I think. I believe she had a miscarriage. I think. And so I think Why they were telling tell her. Woman? It's on her website, baby. Um, and she had. Um, and so she started trying to eat healthier and eat better mm-hmm. and. Um, Miss Teacher, um, and so um, you know they. I guess they were telling her about like uh, things that she ate and different things that you know her body makeup and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. like you said, that is important. Um, and so that's where the company was birthed out of. Mm-hmm. And so she used like all natural, you know, organic ingredients. And literally, she she um, is really proud of the fact that she's like on you know different. Um, seasonings that you may buy. Some of the things you may not know how to pronounce, but hers or her, she was like, her ingredients is everything on there that you can pronounce and you can understand. Yeah. And so she thrives on that. And so it's, yeah. when I tell y'all, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so plug for Imari Eats. Genesis, girl, we got you. <laughs> yeah, no, I was yeah. thinking of actually, like, for my patients, because I'm just... Mm-hmm. I tell a lot of people that they need to cut out salt. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, if I could have like little packets, I'd be like, hey, just try this. Mm-hmm. Why don't you try I will this? ask her yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that's we, good stuff. Let me we check de- myself. We desperately need salt-free options. Oh, um, yeah. And her, when I tell y'all, like if you pour it in your hand, you know, in your hand and taste it, I'll be like, okay, no. But put it on the food, like the high mm-hmm. stakes. She, and she sends a list of, she sent us a list of things. And I think it's on the website as well. Um, different um, foods that she recommends to use the seasonings okay. on. Mm-hmm. And so um, we did, when we first got it, we used like the high stakes on eggs. Mm-hmm. I had the high stakes, you can use that like on poultry, you know, mm-hmm. um, steaks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But she said try them on eggs. Y'all, amazing.com. That was the pause because they were so good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, I'm talking about like really, really good. And because of some health issues that he had, we try to stay away from the lot of salt. So mm-hmm. we do um, use her stuff quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, what you got, sir? The vision for Moms of Margin. What What does the future look like for that? That's good. So, the future is You're not going to my... Oh, okay, sorry. I'm sorry. So, I, I don't know. I feel like I keep trying to, like bring myself back down. Um, but so I want to have a lot of, I want to have mom coaches. And so I want mm-hmm. to have a mom from every aspect of, of life. Mm-hmm. So I want to have like a single mom on my team that can then coach other single moms. Mm-hmm. And I want to have a, a working mom who, who works remotely. Like, so people could be matched specifically mm-hmm. with moms in their current season mm-hmm. um, and situation that can like help them work through. Okay. What strategies really work for you? Um, and so I, I really want that to be part of my focus. So even if it's just like a, a mom who's in residency, um, who, who's in their, their, um, residency training or a mom who, um, who is going through a divorce or a mom, I I really want people to be able to find the support that they want from Mm -hmm. someone. 
who really understands the situation. So currently, Moms of Margin is targeted at working moms because that is what I am. Right. Um, and so I want to be able to branch out and because I, 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 look, I just look at my neighborhood and I'm like, Allie, she's a stay-at-home mom that does homeschooling. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, that is a totally different situation yeah. that, and she needs like a different type of support. So I really want moms with margin to be something that can help support moms in every single season situation. Um, I also want it to get into a corporate space. So that way we can help companies better support their mom. Absolutely. That's good. And so that way we can not, not that we're going to do anything to, to help with the pay discrepancy, but it's just like, Hey, this mom can be more focused at work because she doesn't have that mental load worrying about everything that has to go on at right. home. Like she has the systems in place and like allowing the company to be like, Hey, like if you help this mom with this, she's more likely to stay. She's going to be more productive. So helping mm -hmm. companies see the benefit in investing in their moms mm -hmm. so that, so that they're able to be more productive. They're able to be more present. They might not be as abs absent as often because mm -hmm. they have that village. They have that system. So like if the kid's sick, normally mom's staying home. Well, maybe yeah. it's like, if we have the system, like, Okay, so dad's gonna stay home this time. I feel like people frequently get thrown off because they're like, I'm like, oh, you probably should call Mark. Like, Marcus is more available. Like, why are you calling me? <laughs> like, Marcus is more available. Like, Marcus can take off work. Marcus can. I'm like, I have patience. Like, I can't just like drop everything and run. Yeah. And so, um, just I feel like part of that is the nature of um, the career path that I chose. But like, they don't always have to call mom. And so, like, just helping them understand that, like, hey, we can create these things in a corporate like a large scale that's mm -hmm. really going to help impact yeah. impact these moms mm -hmm. and not locally but globally mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah absolutely I like that. Yeah. Ron tells you don't know, spit it out like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good offering because he like that. You say you looking at you. <laughs> yeah. so, um, do you have any more questions? You want them to um, give their handles and yeah, different things give, like that. Give out your information though where yeah. they can find you. Um, websites, please. Um, anything that can help them connect with you guys. Yeah, so Moms with Margin, sorry, Moms of Margin. I got to make sure I get. <laughs> Momsofmargin.com, that is the website. Um, it is also Moms of Margin on Instagram. And we haven't really reached out to those other platforms yet. So okay. that's really where you want to find us. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Anything else you want to leave with the people? Um, It's I'll... just local right now, right? Yeah. Happening with, you know, like close to your area mm -hmm. that you're doing it for. Um, but yeah, that just like just as these other um, food uh, companies can ship stuff and all these things are going on that can you know mm -hmm. okay go ahead mm -hmm. <laughs> now um, I'm I'm a I'm a big sports guy so uh, a lot of things that in my life I like to bring back to a sports atmosphere so just being a good team teammate is something that was always important to me whenever I was on the team and you can relate that to you know marriage and stuff. Absolutely. So, like how she was saying, I didn't realize, like you, you hear stereotypes and stuff, but I didn't realize how much of a father's presence is not always seen outside of the home. Because, like you say, her career path and a lot of things that I've navigated through, a lot of times people were surprised to see me at either doctor's appointments oh, yeah. or of course. at extracurricular activities. And I didn't really catch on to it until I was like, man, a lot of women yeah. here all the time. Like, and they'd be like, it's so great to see your father here. And I'm just like, I'm just bringing my kid to an event. Like, I don't, I, don't, yeah. I didn't think it was You'd a big deal. I didn't yeah. think it was a big deal. Um, so as we're talking about creating that margin, and it's not just about giving moms a tool, as you said, to you know continue to pour into themselves, but also to create that team, that that village, absolutely, that we all have a part in it. Because we were talking about it on the way down here yesterday, and it was like, a lot of times, us as men, we don't realize, or we don't know exactly how to help our our mate. Like, like we try to do things, but like it's not received in the way we would think it would be. Like, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this to help you. And she'd be like, I'm really helpful. Yeah. Like, I'm going to mess with you. And I was like, but why? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, and there was a lot of tension right there. But like with the meal planning, and that just opened up uh, an avenue for us to have those conversations. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize that was that helpful. 
okay. That's good. What else am I doing that's not that's good really helping you? Mm-hmm. Or how can I do that? And then, you know, back and forth, you know, two way street. Yeah. But I, I feel like with Moms and Margin that was our gateway to have those conversations and to realize that there are other ways that I can help and this might not be helpful. So I would just press upon anybody to kind of take a hold of that and realize that have those conversations and figure out how you can help each other yeah. and be a great team because everybody can when they talk about gender roles and stuff like that, like I didn't really grow up in a household where I saw that. So I you know mostly a single mom right. mostly. Um, but I was able to do certain things, so it wasn't nothing for me to see a woman do a quote unquote man's job or a man to do a quote unquote woman's job. Yeah. But still understanding that teamwork effort and stuff like that. Yeah. I've taken a lot from her in this process that she's yeah. trying to give to other people. Yeah. And that's just what we call creating the recipe for your relationship for yeah. what works for you all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You you your experiences is what gave you your perspective. The same for you, Tiffany. And then when y'all got together, like you said, y'all kinda clashed. But once you really listened to what helped her, because you took a moment to say, Oh, I thought I was helping you by doing this, but in all actuality, it was just a conversation needed to say, How can I serve you better? Yeah. How can I help you? And vice versa. Mm-hmm. That makes sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And and I didn't tell him to say that for everybody who might be thinking, right. like some Mr. Johnny right. when I say right. I did not tell I, him I to thought say about that. it as he was yeah. saying it. Oh, yeah. didn't say that. We didn't prompt him so, or prompt yeah. him before yeah. we started this. So that that is big. Yeah. Um, with the, and that's one of the things I want to talk to y'all about. So with this growing, um, you helping moms, mm-hmm. but then would you put a piece in there for fathers as well? Because my book, GPS of a Man's Journey, one of the things that Shameless I... Shameless plug. Yeah. One of the things that I put in there that a man is a role model in his family, whether he's there or not. And 90% of a man being a father is just being there. The 10% is you need to do some stuff, but 90% of it is just being present. present. Right, right. And a lot of the times when a father is being a father or a husband... If you just listen to what's needed from words or how they move or whatever, then you can pick it up. And that's the biggest thing with couples because a lot of husbands want to help their wives and they want to help with their perspective, with their perspective. Yeah. And then when the wife said, well, this ain't help me, then they get mad. Like, well, mm-hmm. you do what you tell me. I ain't right. gonna help you no more. I'm trying to help you. Yeah. yeah. Like, you got a whole, I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just saying yeah. that wasn't, yeah. Not, we mm-hmm. could have did without that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. that's yeah. that's gonna be big with this. So as y'all continue to grow <laughs> it, and, and my whole thing with asking was the husbands being receptive to it is because I know a lot of husbands feel like they need to be a part of everything mm-hmm. and they need to be the leader of okay. their household. Mm-hmm. So when this comes in and moms grab a hold of it, well, we don't need to do that. We can just do it this way. Our way work. But what yeah. if this way works better? Because at the end of the okay. day, yeah. something might work, but is it benefiting the person? Mm-hmm. And that's that's what this is doing. It's benefiting the actual people in the marriage, yeah, because yeah. you have those daily stressors now taking off you, mm-hmm. yeah. So now you can have a conversation yeah. in your regular voice without hollering and cussing each other out, type mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah. And so, so the way the way I kind of see it working is like this is just a piece mm-hmm. um, that helps you create just like that first bit of margin that you can then take and create whatever else you need. Yeah. Um, and if you find a system, you're like, hey, you know what? Blue Apron or um, this other thing is much better for us. Hey, you do that. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like people need that first little bit of margin in order to know what's going to work best for them. Yeah. And so one of, part of, one of the steps um, just within creating your own meal plan is just like, hey, what's your favorite meal? Like making sure that everyone else is invested. Mm-hmm. So it's not like mom's like creating all of her her favorite meals yeah. and putting them all together it's mm-hmm. like no everyone everyone has has a part to play and then um also it's like okay like these are your favorite meals so this is also your week to cook like okay all you gotta do is like mm-hmm. dump dump everything on the sheet <laughs> yeah. pan and whatnot yeah. and so it involves it is geared towards mom but it, it still involves everyone Absolutely. um That's and good. so everyone has like a, a little part to play um 
And then there, there are other things that, that Marcus is doing that kind of like play off of it. It's like, okay, so, so now that, um, now that you have this margin, it's like, oh, you can also t- take, take this thing that he's doing. Um, and so you can start to incorporate that. And so I really, I really want something like, I just go after moms cause that's just where my heart is. But right. I totally see that like there eventually would be a space where there would be some dads who are like, Hey, like, is there any resources or anything for for us to help know how to best support them um mm-hmm. and so one thing that we have is it's a control journal um which is kind of the exact opposite of what it sounds like um mm-hmm. instead of like having all the control it's like you're putting all of the control in this little notebook uh-huh. and so that's what marcus would flip through when he would pick out the recipes yeah, yeah. um and so like instead of i know everyone has their pinterest boards uh-huh. and so instead of having a pinterest board it's like i actually print out the recipe and i was like hey marcus we're gonna have a a Dutch baby is like always my go-to breakfast thing. Um, and so he just goes, gets the recipe, um, which is also, it's really funny because so uh, just randomly a Dutch baby calls for two, Bye. three room temperature eggs. Okay. So I'll sit the eggs out and Marcus will think that he's being helpful and yeah. he will see the three little eggs out on the counter and he will put them up. That's what I was gonna say. And you'll put them back. Right? I, I do. And then like, we'll be like, we I up. was helping. And, like, and I'm like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you just said a, a Dutch baby? Yes. A German yes. pancake? Yeah, Dutch so um, so one of the ways so Marcus used to help, and so this kind of just goes, this is like how our relationship is built. So Marcus would always make breakfast on Saturdays. Okay. And so that that was him helping. He made okay. breakfast on Saturdays. Okay. But he'd actually be in the kitchen for like forever flipping pancakes. And I'm like, this isn't really like you weren't available to me. Like that isn't the like I, I do appreciate like yeah. having breakfast, but like if I could do it in ten minutes, you're gonna take thirty. That's not necessarily the most helpful thing. Um so now good though. Pancake. It was so good. It was good, so though. good. Yeah. Um so now we like we typically do a Dutch baby, so you just as long as the eggs are warm, uh-huh. that's the longest yeah. part. Yeah. Okay. Um but you just pour it in a cast iron skillet, put it in the oven, and then like you come back 20 minutes later and it's done and everyone has it's like just one big pancake um and so every it, it's done marcus didn't spend 30 minutes in the kitchen um and have have like 50 minutes worth of dishes um and so that's just something that we've been able to <laughs> that's that's what we do though <laughs> the same way so you, say, so, so you say real quick the dutch baby you mm-hmm. take the eggs and crack them and put them in a skillet. Well, so no, so a Dutch baby, it's a, a really big pancake. So it's oh, okay. three three room temperature eggs, uh, half a cup of warm milk, a half a cup of flour, um, a little bit of butter, and like three what's, tablespoons what's the of sugar. That's um, not me. What's the key? You got to put the cast iron skillet in the oven you first pre-heat. and preheat the cast uh, iron skillet with the butter in it. Yeah, and so like it like it like balloons up, and so it's like this pancake that's like overflowing the edges it doesn't like make a mess or anything oh. um and then if you if you do it right then like it's a cast iron skillet so you just literally take it out and like you don't really have that much to yeah clean up. clean up yeah mm-hmm. oh that's cute yeah but it's just like we've just had to <laughs> we've had to go through like that wasn't helpful like I know, I, I, took I know. Personal. Were, I took yeah, it personal. I took. I kind of took oh, it personal a little bit. She was like, "Why are you taking so long cooking?" Because we slick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know what? That I'm sounds breaking good, the third. So when I cook, so I was really born to be a chef. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's here. gonna come to pass. Baby. Oh, you said here. Here, it's gonna come to pass. So it was at one time I could usually taste. A food in a restaurant and I can come home and I can actually create what yeah. I heard but what at that ate. time yeah what I ate uh-huh. but what happened was I had a lot of kids and they needed to eat now so I couldn't pursue that so we are where we at now so but I I concur with you brother I I feel you because it takes a minute I had to get in the space it takes it's like changes. an artist on a white canvas. Now we finna create something. And I bet you everything he cook is, is tastes great, no? It is great. But I'm then like, I mean I feel like there's that commercial where the wife is like trying not to look in the kitchen at all <laughs> at all the yeah. dishes that you still the Romo, how much time? Like, I'll be like, and then I'm almost like, done, Tim. I'm like, like but it, everyone was hungry 30 minutes. You ain't got no snacks or nothing. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't be no 30. Appetizer, you ain't. Well, the good thing about that is he cleans as he goes. Yeah. 
praise Jesus now. Yes, and yes. The, I it's can't, always amazing. I'm OCD, so I can't. Right, I can't right. be cooking with stuff right. anywhere. So, yeah. so it has to be yeah. clean. The kitchen has to be clean first, and then he'll cook it. But he cleans as he goes, and like I said, it's always amazing. And when, when, of course, I was the main one cooking because I was just, you know, mostly at home with the girls. You know, I could slave and take forever to cook these meals and would literally sometimes cook individual meals. And mm -hmm. uh, they would be like, oh, yeah, this is great, mom. But they daddy didn't give them that option. He made one pot. Uh, what I ain't finna do. And cook all y'all gonna eat the same meals. thing. I'm not your mama. Literally, he could put together egg, hot dogs cut up. Maybe some rice, some mashed potato, whatever it is he threw together, put it on the plate, gave them their cup of juice, and they was like, oh, this is so good. Y'all are so evil. <laughs> whatever. So evil. The audience would tell so you. <laughs> they told me, they, you just knew. <laughs> but that was the, the special gift that you had. That was, I did yeah. not have the cooking. I don't want this. Yeah. Oh, and you don't want to eat that. Yeah. I mean, of course, that's what I got when I was little. But then I was like, well, <laughs> sure, I'll make you spaghetti. And sure, I'll make you a hamburger. And sure, I'll wow. do that. But this one right here, y'all, like, I'm not for real, like, any, like, hodgepodge. And they'd be like, oh, this is so good. All I do is put a, a title over it. This is Italian tonight. What makes <laughs> eggs and hot dogs Italian? Y'all, I'm telling Because so I put a little parsley in the Italian. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and and then like, this is so Daddy. Yeah, the presentation and everything. Y'all are evil to your mama because I you <laughs> cook all these meals for y'all that y'all don't even appreciate it. But mm -hmm. let's give y'all a website one more time before we Yes, die. please do. So it is momsofmargin.com. So that is where you can find us. That's M-O-M-S-O-F-M-A-R-G-I-N.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> so if nobody has nothing else, you guys, you want to talk some more? No, I'm good. You I'm sure? good, yeah. You had coffee this morning? No, well, I made tea, but your coffee pod was so you had some still in there, so I had coffee slash lemon tea. It was horrible. I drank it, and I was like, I forgot to take his mm -hmm. pod out. And so I threw it in the sink, and I drank some crayon grape juice. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you this has been. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, thank y'all so much. Um, thank you, thank I don't you, thank think you. this is gonna be the last time we're gonna have y'all because as this continues to unfold into this great impact, the this big impact empire. The world, yeah, yeah. Um, we're gonna have y'all to get some updates. Yeah. On how everything is going. Absolutely. And of course, if y'all need us for anything, any help, support, and whatever, to, just let us to know. Come sit be here with little old moments with the Mobleys. Um, <laughs> but no, for real, we we really, well, I'm going to give you that information for um, Amari Eats. I'll touch bases mm -hmm. with her or whatever because that right. can be another avenue for her stuff to get out there as mm -hmm. well too. So that's, this is, this has been great stuff, y'all. Um, this is Tiffany, Dr. Tiffany <laughs> and Dr. Marcus um, that are here in the studio with us today and we had an amazing time. And y'all tell, <laughs> you finish. And that's what caffeine does to her. It does. Caffeine. I'm going to drink some water after this. <laughs> this has been Moments with the Mobleys. I am your man, Johnny Mobley Jr. And I'm still his wife, Deidre. And we something like an ordinary couple. With extraordinary purpose. Peace out, y'all. Night-night. <laughs>